Welcome to Ecoholics. We will discuss in this video about international economics. So from the subject discipline, it comes under the category of applied economics. First of all, we need to understand how international trade is different from interregional trade. International trade is between the countries and interregional trade is within a country. Suppose, for example, if we would take the example of our country, India, interregional trade is between two states like between uh, Delhi and Mumbai or we can say between Gujarat and Rajasthan but international trade means between India and United States of America between India and Australia between India and Russia etc so interregional interregional trade is different from international trade because when we consider international trade there must be some difficulties like exchange rate difficulties second one is difficulty in custom union difficulties in language difficulties in different parts like what transportation from uh, from etc like for example when we say international trade in international trade we have a lot of difficulties of custom union regional union we have a lot of economic blocks etc are the most important thing but in inter-regional trade we have no difficulties apart from some basic clearances so in international trade the subject discipline deals with four important things first one is international trade theory second one is international trade policy third one is balance of payment and fourth one is adjustment in the balance of payment so first of all we will discuss all these four points because these are uh, the most important points in international economics so you write international economics deals with international economics or we can say international trade international economics deals with international trade theory second one is international trade policy third one is the balance of payment and the fourth one is adjustment in the balance of payment so in the first one international trade theory the most important keyword is theory so we have two dimension under it just for the sake of understanding first one is basis of trade and the second one is gains from trade so basis from trade deals with the theoretical aspect like this is how international trade encourages like for example theories of absolute advantage and comparative advantage derived from basis of trade now understanding the gains from trade it gains from trade means uh, whatever gains we are achieving from a specialization of particular product or by a particular country so gains from trade means from the uh, gains from trade driven by direct consumption after the specialization in particular product second one is international trade policy so here the keyword is international trade policy policy word so policy means when we engage in international trade policy plays an important role so here policy plays an important role because like custom tariff quota embargo or many exchange rate difficulties like uh, when we put some restriction on import duty on additional custom duty so policy matters are the most important things when we deal with the subject called international economics third one is the balance of payment so balance of payment is simple the systematic uh, accounts of domestic country with the rest of the world it means total expenditure with uh, total uh, receipts means total expenditure so total expenditure in relation to total receipts when we uh, arrive with some figure known as balance of payment fourth one is adjustment in the balance of payment if suppose there may be some disequilibria in the balance of payment it means sometimes a country can experience surplus or sometimes a country can experience deficit so adjustment how it is done so the keyword is here is adjustment adjustment with the help of monetary instruments like exchange rate so the central bank of a particular country can alter exchange rate with the help of devaluation or revaluation they can make correction in the temporary balance of payment disequilibria 
Now the next second part of this video is very important. We will trace back the history of international economics, how it is derived or how it is derived from the thought of mercantilist. So first of all, we will draw a timeline. So mercantilism school of thought, what we can say arrived around 16th century to the middle of the 18th century in the countries of Western Europe like United Kingdom, France, Spain, Netherlands, etc. So this thought prevailed in the 16th century. Another one after mercantilism we have Adam Smith. Adam Smith published his book in the year 1776, popularly known as The Wealth of Nations. But the full name is different, an inquiry into the nature and the causes of the wealth of nations. This was the full name of his book, Adam Smith. So Adam Smith propounded some different idea. David Ricardo. So in the year 1870, he published his book, The Political Economy and Taxation. So he propounded a different concept altogether that is still relevant in the present time. So after David Ricardo, we have another timeline. The Great Depression. The Great Depression of 1930. So Great Depression of 1930 or what we can say 1930s because Great Depression started in the year 1929 and it lasts for 1933 and the after effects last uh, around for 10 years. So after Great Depression, we have liberalization, privatization and the era of globalization in the year 1991. And after that, we will discuss one important event that is happening in the year 2018. So the idea behind mercantilism was to export more and restrict imports in order to collect the wealth of nation according to mercantilist. The wealth of nation consists only in goods or in goods. If we export goods, we will earn some money in the form of money. We can say at that time, the bullion was the most important and in that bullion gold accumulation was most famous. So it means if a country exports more, it means they are earning more gold or they are accumulating more gold. So whatever they are uh, doing, it means they are promoting exports and restricting imports. So the role of the government or role of the king was very important in restricting the imports. So the wealth of nation only depends on accumulation of bullion. Most important is gold. Second one is Adam Smith. Adam Smith came and attacked the idea of mercantilism. So Adam Smith was of the opinion that the restrictions on the trade is very, very, very harmful for the countries because at the time of mercantilist thought, the country can only gain at the expense of the other. It means if one country gain, other has to lose. But in the time of Adam Smith, Adam Smith gave the theory of or we can say the law of an absolute advantage. So under it, under absolute advantage theory, Adam Smith was of the opinion that if two countries, one has absolute advantage in one commodity and other country has in the second commodity, they can engage in the trade and they both can gain. After Adam Smith, David Ricardo comes into the picture with his law of comparative advantage. The law of comparative advantage said that if both countries enjoy comparative advantage in one other commodity, it means, for example, we will consider two countries, but one has an absolute advantage in both the commodities, then can also be uh, there is a possibility to engage in trade. So he challenged the idea of Adam Smith. Again comes under David Ricardo. So David Ricardo also in the favor of free trade. So you can see the timeline. They were restricting the trade. They were promoting the free trade. But after Great Depression, there, there, there was a wave of controlling the things. Like government is controlling trade. Government is putting nationalistic policy and restricting all the imports. So again, the same scenario comes into the picture. 
so after great depression there were lot of restriction on trade so after second world war trade started liberalizing with the establishment of gat that is general agreement of tariff and trade in the year 1947 so from 1947 to 1991 trade started and the globalized the era of globalization has been expanding but in 1991 the open economic policy like liberalization privatization and globalization occurred in most of the developing countries so from 1991 to 2018 we were experiencing vast amount of globalization and interdependence of all the countries in the world but in the year 1991 to 2018 we are experiencing lot of free trade free movement of goods and services as well as the most important thing free movement of factors of production but in the year 2018 we are experiencing trade war once again we are experiencing trade war we are putting restriction on immigration that is the most important thing we need to understand when we are dealing with international economics so this is the timeline of international economics this is a seesaw ride of international economics so we need to understand and we need to correlate all these events while we are dealing with international economics hope you like this video please uh, give us big thumbs up like share and subscribe my channel ecoholics uh, see you soon for more videos if you have any comment any doubt you can also mention in the comment box or you can also mail us at our email id given in the description of this video so once again have a nice day thank you so much